go to Job. Job chapter 14. And I will read verse 13 and verse 14. Job chapter Job chapter 14 verse 13 and verse 14. If you get it, let's read. If you can't, you can read it from the screen. Job was saying here, he said, Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. Verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. My prayer this morning, your change has come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. I ask, O oh God, that you breathe a fresh breath upon your word. I pray for every of your precious people this morning. Open their eyes to see. Amen. Open their hearts to perceive. Amen. And let everyone be touched through the power that is in your word. Amen. We give you praise for the testimony ahead of time. In Jesus' name, and let everyone shout a big amen. 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 Now this morning, for about a few minutes, I want to share about what I titled, What do I do when faith seems not working? What do I do when you've tried everything and nothing works? What else do I do? Because sometimes in life, you will go through some situations, some hard time, some perilous time, as it were. You've prayed, you fasted, you used your faith, you've done everything possible and nothing happened. What must you do at that point in time? The several times in our lives, you will definitely face some challenges. You will definitely face some hard times. And as a matter of fact, you will do everything that the Bible prescribes for you to do. And after you've done everything and yet nothing happens, nothing moves. And you get to a point in life that you are almost giving up on life. You have almost given up and said, God, it seems as if God is not alive. Have you ever been in a situation in your life that you've concluded in your mind that it seems that God is not in control? Have you been in a situation in your life that you prayed, you fasted, they told you to give a prophetic offering or a sacrificial offering. You gave everything to God and yet nothing happened. And you get stuck. And you said in your haste that God is not exist. That God is no more God. Because you are frustrated. Listen to me. The Bible tells us that with God nothing shall be impossible. But yet you believe God for this and yet nothing happens. We are in such situations sometimes in our life. You've been in a crossroad in your life at times and you said it's better to die than to live. Listen to me, Paul, I mean Job came to this point in his life. He said, God, that thou wouldest hide me in your rod because I felt that I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing the anger of God. I, I felt as if everything went against me. But he came to a conclusion. He said, if a man die, can he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change come. Listen to me, people of God. Your change will come. Amen. I say your change will come. Amen. Don't give up on God because God will not give up on you. Amen. They told us that faith... <laughs> works but yet you've used your faith and nothing works mark 11 24 tells us whatsoever you desire when you pray believe that you receive and it shall be given you've prayed you believed and you did not receive mark chapter 9 verse 23 
tells us that if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. You actually believe, but nothing seems possible. And yet you, you say, God, what next can I do? What test can I do? I've prayed all the prayer I can pray. I fasted. I called brethren to pray with me. They prayed. They fasted. We believed God. We confessed God's word. We stood on the word. We did everything possible, but yet nothing happened. What next should I do? It's a question that I began to ask myself while I was away. And God gave me things that I should tell you to do. Listen to me. You probably might have not read it in some book or you might have read it, but listen. If you put things to practice, it works. Yeah. Are you with me this morning? Yeah. What should I do when it seems nothing works? And I will, show, I, will, I will share some scriptures with you. Now let's look at Job chapter 21 verse 15. Job chapter 21 verse 15. Now this was a season in the life of Job that he, it was as if he was attacked because of his sin. Or probably you might be in a situation in your life and what you are going through, people said, probably you might have sinned. And it, you are suffering because of the consequences of your sin. But listen to me, Job, his friend came to him and said, what advantage, what benefit is it? Look, let, let's read it. The Bible said, his friend told him, said, what is the Almighty? That we should serve him. And what profit should we have if we pray to him? Have you ever been in a situation in your life that what is God? What is this God that we should serve him? What benefit is it to me to serve God? To come to church, to pray, to fast, to, 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 to give him church, to, to not have done all this thing. What is this God that I should serve him? What profit is it that I should pray unto me? Because I've prayed, I don't have answer. What profit is prayer to me when God does not answer? Listen to me. But when Job will respond, he said, The counsel of the wicked is far from me. Because I know that my Redeemer lives. Listen to me. No matter what you are going through, I prophesy, God will come true for you. I decree, God will come true for you. Listen, we don't serve a dead God. We serve a mighty God. Yeah. When God says a thing, he will definitely do it. I don't know the promise that God has given to you, but I decree and I declare, God will come true for you. Yeah. If you begin to shout the big amen. Yeah. God will come true for you. Amen. What should I do when it seems nothing works? Now let me give you one of the keys. Which is a very simple thing, but the reason why it doesn't work is because we are doing it ignorantly. And you see, anything you don't do rightly, you can't get the right answer. It's a simple thing, but we don't know how to do it in a best in a better way, in with an understanding. And it's a simple thing that we share with you, which of course many of us must have learned it. But God gave me a, a deeper in-depth in this. And that's what I want to share with you. The first thing you can do when it seems nothing works is to give God explosive praise. Somebody say explosive. explosive. Say explosive. explosive. You give God explosive praise. Now listen to this. Praise gives you access into the heart of God. Have you ever thought of the reason why God said David was a man after God's heart? He assessed the heart of God through praise. And praise is where God dwells. And you can't dwell in God's place and be ridiculed. When it seems nothing works, begin to praise God. Amen. But don't just praise Him, but praise Him with understanding. And that is where I'm Amen. going. Amen. You can pray amiss, but you can't praise God amiss. Mm. You can't miss no. God praising no. God. You can't miss God praising God. Mm. Because the address of God is praise. The Bible says in, in Psalm 22 verse 3, the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. Where God dwells is habitation. is where people praise him. Listen, when you praise God, God will move for you. Amen. 
what prayer can't do, what prayer and fasting and your TV can't do, the mountains that prayer can move, praise we move it. Amen. So when it seems nothing works, learn to praise God in an explosive way. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God in an explosive way. David said in Psalm 100 verse 4, he said, I will enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Praise gives you access into where God dwells. And you can enter into his court and put the stays. Praise God. Whether you see praises or music, it doesn't matter. Praise God. Explosive praise in your home, in your room. When nothing seems working, praise him. Praise him. Because praise invites God. And when God visits you, the problem is over. Now, let me say this. Praise hands your problem over to God. And when God take over, the battle is over. Amen. Praise hands your problem over to God. And when God takes over, the battle is over. Amen. Amen. So learn to praise God. You praise God, you dance, you celebrate Him. You don't know where you are praising, but you know that if you can praise this God, He will show up for you. Joshua in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Three nations came against him. He does not know what to do. In fact, Judah does not even have ability to face only more. Talkless of three nations coming together against him. But he has this common sense. He went before God and God gave him a secret. He said, look for the singers and the trumpeters. And they were blowing trumpet and singing. Can you imagine three nations standing in front of you and all you can do is to blow trumpet and praise God? Does, does that not look ridiculous? And that is why until you do the ridiculous, you can't get the miraculous. Amen. Do ridiculous things for God. Praise God, dance, celebrate before him like David. He danced to an extent that the king, the king ropes on him fell off. He was partially naked. Praising this God and this God came true for him. Listen, God will come true for you this year. Yeah. If you believe it, shout a big amen. Yeah. Yeah. You can't praise God and miss God. You will definitely connect with this God because he inhabits the praises of his people. That is where he dwells. That is his dwelling place. Now, let me say this. Last night I was meditating on this and God said to me that the secret to every barrenness in our life is praise. It's not only barrenness of the womb. Financially you can be barren. Materially, spiritually you can be barren. Barren in any areas of your life but when you want to get breakthrough out of barrenness, you need to praise God. Isaiah chapter 54, God spoke to me last night with this. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1. The Bible says, God gave a barren people a prescription. He said, sing, O barren. Hey. If you can sing, it's a prescription of heaven. If you can sing, break through his God. He says, sing, O barren. Thou that didst bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Listen to me, many of you, you don't know how to sing and cry aloud. You have been singing quietly that your next neighbor doesn't hear you. Ah. That the next room doesn't hear you. Ah. Listen to me. All they'll be hearing about you is your complaint and murmuring. But I want you to change the gear. Somebody said change the gear. Change the gear. Yeah. Put the gear of praise and sing and let the devil hear you for the first time praising God. Amen. Amen. Let the devil hear you for the first time praising God. Praise him very loud, explosively. You praise God until something moves. Uh, listen to me. One of the ways to, to, to destroy the chains of the enemy is to learn to praise God in the midst of your crisis, Amen. in the midst of your challenges, Amen. in your dead hand, where you can praise God. Heaven will open for you. Amen. Where you can praise God, breakthrough will happen for you. Amen. I declare for somebody this morning, as God live it, as you 
that live in this house, uh, doors will open for you. God will break through for you. That situation that seems impossible, God will get it done for you. If you believe and shout hallelujah. Praise God exclusively. Give him praise. God says sing, oh Barry. And those that does not bear, he says sing and cry aloud. He said, many are the children of your destiny. There are some children coming. There are some blessings they are coming in torrent into your life. When you keep singing aloud, when you can sing for the first time and let every register your voice singing and praising God, this God will visit you. Amen. I said, this God will visit you. Amen. In Acts chapter 16, the Bible said, Paul and Silas, in the middle of the night, they prayed and nothing happened. But when they changed the gear to praises, as they began to praise God, the Bible said God in happy. He dwells where people praise. God visited them. Amen. God praise is the dwelling place of God. You can't praise God and be barren. You can't praise God and be in chains. When you praise God, something must happen. Amen. You remember Jacob struggled for years. But when Jacob gave back to Judah, Judah mispraised. You can't give back to praise and still be barren. Hey. When he came back to Judah, my goodness, uh, Judah is the praise. And the Bible says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. <laughs> Nor the Lord giver shall divide between his feet. Until she not come and unto him shall he get. Listen to me. The reason why God vow and swear that scepter will remain forever in the tribe of Judah is because Judah is the dwelling place of God. Listen, if you want the blessing of God to be permanent over your life, you must learn to praise his God. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the afternoon. Praise him at all times. If you can praise God, God will break through for you. Yeah, the word of God, 2016 is our year of explosive breakthrough. I decree this year you will experience breakthrough. I decree you will experience breakthrough. You will break through. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says it, He will surely do it. I decree this year you will break through. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Break through. When everything seems not happening. When you don't know what else to do, praise God. Amen. Do you know that when things happen and when everything gets talked, you are discouraged, you are frustrated. And that is why you don't have capacity to praise God. Mm. You are depressed. Mm. You are cast down. You are frustrated and discouraged. But in the midst of your crisis, if you can still praise God, Hallelujah. that is what we call sacrifice yes, of praise. praise. Ah. Sacrifice is not what convenience, but you are doing it. Mm. There is no hope. But in the midst of all your darkness and hopelessness, you arise and say, God, I know you are my redeemer. You live it. We call it sacrifice of praise. Mm. And that was the secret of David. He learned to give God praise. Yes. When all nations yes. surround him and encamp him like a holster, he said, in God will I trust. You are my shield, you are my buckler, you are my strength, you are my redeemer, you are my hope and my refuge. In the midst of your crisis, if you can give God this sacrifice of praise, he's going to show forth for you. I've come with the voice of God. In this service, you begin to express your breakthrough. Give God praise. In the midst of your crisis, you can still praise Him. He's a mighty God. You look at that situation and you are dancing. You are praising God. It looks crazy. It's like you are mad. It's like you are out of your senses. But listen to me, miracle proof. I mean, when you do ridiculous things, you get miraculous things. Praise God when nothing seems not working. Hallelujah. You give Him praise. You celebrate God. You dance and dance before him. And the Bible talk about David in Psalm 119. David said, seven times daily will I praise God for his wondrous works. Seven times. It's not once or twice. Some of us, 
in a month we don't even have a time to celebrate god and today i don't want to pray i, don't, I just want to dance dance until you kill that problem kill that problem with praise keep praising so i told you the other time look out for some bees that you can't meet by yourself spread it in your room and start dancing around them dancing around those you kill those bees with praise and god will show up you can't praise god and he will not visit you because god in now be the praise that is where god dwells you praise god in spite of the problem because you don't see the problem but you are seeing god that can solve the problem i'm speaking to somebody this morning i don't know what you are going through but if you can praise god he will break through for you in the lives of your children if you can praise him he will break through for you concerning your husband if you can praise him he will break through for you concerning your health if you can praise god for your health God of heaven will break through for you. Lift your hand and shout a big hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. Now, you must praise God with understanding. Someone say understanding. And that is where I'm actually going. You must praise God with understanding. Psalm 74. Let's read Psalm 74, verse 6 and 7. Psalm 74, verse 6 and 7. That's where I'm going this morning. The Bible said, But now they break down the caves, the carved work thereof at once with axes and, and hammers. Verse 7. Sorry, Psalm 47, not 74. And Psalm, Psalm 47, verse 6 and 7. Psalm 47. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. Verse 6, 7. That's where I'm going. Say, For God is the King of all the heart. Sing ye praises with what? Sing ye praises with what? Listen to me. Singing praises to God doesn't move heaven. Is singing praises with understanding. You know what you are doing. You understand the fact that praises is where God dwells. It's an understanding. You understand that the fact that when you praise Him, God visits you. It's an understanding. When you praise God sacrificially, you know that that is what moves God to act. When you have understanding of praise, my goodness. Praise is not just a time in church calendar or church program that after prayer is praise. And everybody dance and sing. No, that is not an understanding. An understanding of praise is that the time for praise is a time of warfare. The time of Hallelujah. praise is a time that God will visit. The time of praise, my goodness, is a time that God turns around difficult situations. Listen, if you can praise God with understanding, there is going to be a shift in your life. I said there is going to be a shift in your life. If you believe that, shout the big amen. Praise God with understanding. When you have understanding of what praise is, then you begin to see massive breakthrough as you begin to praise God. Now, when we talk about praising God with understanding, what do I mean? There are several things you can praise God for. Not what the devil has done, or not the woes and the mischief that happens in your life. But you praise God with understanding. There are certain, I was reading in December, I was reading the whole chapter of Psalm. 150 chapters of the book of Psalm. And when I was reading it, I began to see the lifestyle of David. How David praised God and what David praised God for. Many of us, what we are praising God for is not real. But when you praise God scripturally, you praise God with understanding, there's going to be a breakthrough. Amen. What do I praise God for? That's where I'm going. What should I praise God for? And I will show you in the Bible, I've seen 10 things we can praise God for. And the first one, we're going to talk about one or two today, and we're going to round off. Hallelujah. What should I praise God for? Number one, you praise Him for His word. Someone say praise him for his work. Psalm 56, verse 4 and verse 10. Psalm 50. Now, watch this. Look up and let's read this together. Psalm 56, verse 4 and verse 10. 
The Bible says, in God, I will praise what? I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Verse 10. Quickly. In God, I will praise what? I will praise his word. In the, in the Lord, will I praise his word. Listen. The first thing you must praise God for in the midst of crisis is to praise him for his word. You don't praise God for the problem or what has happened. You praise God for his word. Listen to me. If you are sick and you prayed, you fasted, you used your faith and nothing happened. The only thing remain for you to do is to praise him for his word. What does his word say? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. The Bible says that I am God that healeth thee. I am God that takes away your infirmity and healeth your sickness. You take that one and begin to praise God. Father, I praise you for your word. Your word says you have healed me. Your word says you will deliver me. You praise God for what his word says. I will praise your word. Pra Do you know why you should praise the word of God? Psalm 119 verse 89. The Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is set to forever. The word of God cannot move. It can change. When you praise God for his word, he will show forth to honor his word. Because God is not a liar. When he says it in his word and you praise his word, he will show up. He will show up. You can imagine yourself coming to you, Daddy, you are wonderful for that car, that for that bicycle you bought for me. Every day, you say, Daddy, thank you for that bicycle. You've not bought the bicycle, but it's thanking you. Would you buy it? Would you buy it? Daddy, thank you for the bicycle. Daddy, thank you for that. And he's dancing. Where are you dancing? Daddy, because you bought me a bicycle. You said it and you have done it. Listen to me. God has said it in his word. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither is sons of man that repent. If he says it, he will do it. If he has spoken it, he will bring it to pass. God said, I am he that he like thee. Praise God for his word and he will show forth for you. How we praise his word. Take a word from his word and praise him. In Titus chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says, God has given his promises and he will never lie. Hey. He has promised and he will never lie because he's not in his character to lie. Uh -huh. he, even if God wants to lie, he can't lie because he doesn't have the capacity to lie. In Romans chapter 3 verse 4, the Bible says, let all men be liars, but let God if God says it, Amen. he will do it. Amen. Jesus spoke clearly in Matthew chapter 24 verse 35. He said, every word of God, a dot in my word shall not pass away unfulfilled. Every and now shall pass away, but a dot in my word cannot pass away. When you take that word concerning your issue and celebrate that word and dance before God for his word, he will show forth. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says God is in his word. He watches over his word to perform it. When you dance and celebrate the word of God, God is in his word. He watches over it to make sure his word comes true in your life. God will come true for you. I say God will come true for you. I say God will come true for you. If you believe that, shout a big amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18. The Bible says, by these two immutable things, wow. which is impossible for God to lie. It's impossible. He has given a promise. The Bible says, when you read it in the upper screen verse, it says, when God gave promise to Abraham, because he could wow. not swear by any greater, he swore by himself that surely in blessing I will bless you, in multiply I will multiply you, through you shall all the heart be blessed. And the Bible says, and when Abraham waited patiently on God, and he endured patiently, he obtained the promise. Because by these two immutable things, what are the two immutable things that cannot be shaken? The word of God, the promise that God gave to him that Abraham, I God will bless you. Wow. It does not matter your age. 99 years old man and 90 years old woman God, 
The last time he menstruated was 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. 50 years ago. And God said, whether there is a menopause or menopause stop, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. The fact that I am God, I created time and I can move out of time. Uh -huh. Come on now. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And God said, if, listen, there are certain things that God will do in your life. It's not because of your faith. Mm -hmm. It's because of your praise. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Do you know that it was not everybody that believed God in the Bible that received the miracle? Yes, sir. Sarah, when God showed up and said to Abraham that by this time next year, your wife Sarah will give her. In the chamber, eight, Sarah laughed. <laughs> this man doesn't know what he's saying. 90 years. And God had it. And God said, Sarah, you laughed. No, I did not lie. I did not lie. I did not. So you don't believe me. I didn't lie. He denied that he lied, but God had it. And God said, because you laugh, because you laugh, I'm going to give you a child. That the dying child, his name shall become laughter. Because you laugh. I, God did not punish that for her unbelief. But listen, when you praise God, your praise will overrule faith. When you praise God, your praise. We have a rule protocol. I'm speaking to somebody this morning that can praise God. If you can praise God, God will work for you. I say if you can praise God, God will work for you. Sarah did not believe. But because she laughed and God, God will put a new song in your mouth. I said you will laugh. God will give you a new song to sing. You will laugh and laugh and celebrate. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. She did not believe God, but because she laughed. Ha, this year you will laugh. Amen. You will dance. Amen. You will celebrate. Amen. As you celebrate, listen, what faith can do, praise will get it done for you. Yes, yes. Zachariah, in Luke chapter 1, God, God sent an angel and came to Zachariah. The angel said to Zachariah, he said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God Almighty. I stand in God's presence. And I've come with this word from you from God that your wife Elizabeth will conceive and give birth. <laughs> Zachariah laughed. He said, by the way, you don't know my age. I've grown beyond the age of childbearing. The engine has stopped working. I can't perform it. Even if I want to, it can't work. It has packed up. My wife Zachariah has passed the age of she has menstruated 50 years ago. She can't. Please, this is just a tale story. We don't want to hear it. We've registered it in our mind that concerning children, we've closed the place. Probably they've adopted the son. But the angels of God was hungry. And the angels of God punished him for his own beliefs. You don't believe. You become deaf and dumb until you see the blessing. God did not take away the blessing, but he punished them for it, for their unbelief. But the angel said to Zachariah, in spite of your unbelief, God will still do it. Mm. And that same month, yes, Zachariah took him miraculously. Mm. And she gave birth. Listen to me, there are certain things that you don't believe. But because you praise him, yes, because you celebrate him, oh, yeah. God of heaven will bring it to pass in your life. Yeah. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Yeah. That thing looks impossible, impossible. Everybody knows that this situation is impossible. Uh. But because you praise God that lives outside impossibility, because you praise God that created time and lives outside time, God will come true for you. Yeah. Somebody shout, hey, amen to that. For his word, Amen. you know why you should praise his word. Wow. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 tells us the word of God is what we are the word of the king is there is power. You praise God because his word is powerful, no matter the situation that is around you. If you can praise his word, his word will break through for you. The power of heaven is invested in his word, the power of a king is in his word. 
The Bible said the king will speak. Who will question him that what are you saying? There is no one that will question his word. Listen, there is a king in heaven Amen. that rules over the affairs of Amen. men. His word is final. Amen. I don't know what your doctor has said. Amen. I don't know what your lawyer has said. I don't know what your boss has said. But there is God in heaven that overrules all words. Because his word is eternity. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the thought in his word shall not pass away. I've come to represent that king this morning. I decree God will come true for you. If you can praise his word, this word will come true for you. I say receive your miracle now. Now, 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 now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I will praise his word. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. I will praise his word. I will praise his word because he cannot lie. I will praise his word because it's a mighty God. I will praise his word because it's a glorious God. I will praise his word. Look for that situation in your life. And get just a word from God. Celebrate. Dance that word until that word manifests for you. Dance and celebrate that word. David knew how, how to enter into God's heart. By taking his word and come to him and say, You see, the Bible says, Take the word and turn to the Lord. Take the word from God, turn to him and say, This is what your word says. And you start dancing to his word. You are releasing your faith through his word. You are celebrating his word. God will just look down and say, Who is this son of mine that celebrates you? I must visit him. I must visit him. Listen to me. Is anybody in the house this morning expecting God's visitation? Are you expecting God's receive visitation? Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Ah, this week, before the end of this week, heaven will visit you. Heaven will visit your home. Heaven will visit your health. He will visit your family. Financial visitation, receive it now. Miracle money, receive it now. Angelic visitation. Receive it now, 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 now. Amen. 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 I will praise his word. Yes, always. Do you know what many of us are praising God for? Unbelief. You cannot be done. God has failed. God change the gear. So tell somebody change the gear. Praise God and praise him for his work. His work can never fail. His work can never fall to the ground. The Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 23 verse 19, God that cannot lie is not a man that say it and he will not do it. He's not the son of man that speak and will change his mind. But when this God speak, he will definitely bring it to pass. Celebrate his word. I will praise your word. Somebody shout hallelujah to that. I will praise his word. Look for the heaviest of barrenness in your life. Take a scripture and celebrate God. Dance around God with that scripture. And you will see God marshal forth for you. God is coming down for you. Praise the Lord. Is coming down for you. Praise his word. Millions of words are here, you can grab them. And start. you don't need two words, just one word. One word from God is enough for you. Just one word. I will praise his word. Now, quickly, in five minutes, I will just introduce this and we, we continue from here. What do I praise God for? David again said, I will praise him for his name. Ah, I will praise him for what? I will praise him for his name. Anytime you see problem before you, look for one of the name of God. Probably his sickness. And look for his name that says, I am Jehovah Rapha. God that healed thee. I said, Father, I want to praise your name. Your name is Rapha. <laughs> your name is the one that he, your name is so powerful that he is. Praise him for his name. Praise him for his name. His name is above every other name. At the mention of his name, every name is bowed. Every tongue confess. Praise him for his name. Is there anybody in the house this morning that wants to praise God for his name? Praise him for his name. Do you know the name of God? His name is Jehovah. Jehovah El Shaddai. God Almighty. Praise him because he's 
your hell shall die. Present when God showed up to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, he said, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Praise it because it's almighty. Almighty means El Shaddai. Praise him for his war and praise him for his name. Look for his name. His name is Jehovah Rohi. Psalm 23, verse 1. David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Listen to me. The overload, he cannot lead you and lead you astray. When you don't know what to do, the step to take, the situation at hand is beyond you. Look for one name of God, Jehovah Rohi, God, my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He lead them beside the still water. He restored my soul. He, 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 he led me beside the still water. He restored my soul. Yet do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no him. For thou out with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. God, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life and I will drain the house of God forever and ever and never and never and never somebody shout Hallelujah! Stand up and feed this morning. 